Hi, everybody. Trinity John here from Simpler Trading. We're going to go over our broad market analysis for today. Uh, today is the 18th of August, and we'll be covering the days of the 18th through the 23rd into Friday. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody of our Labor Day sell. That's right. Save 30% today with this code. So make sure you use this if there's anything out there in the Trendy store that you're looking for. Again, you can use this by using the code LABOR24. Let's go ahead and get started in the BMA. That stands for Broad Market Analysis. We're going to open this up. Um, and we're the first thing we're going to go over is this week's major U.S. economic reports and Fed speakers. You're going to see a theme here and that exactly is going to be talking heads so on monday tomorrow 9 15 eastern time we have christopher waller uh, welcoming remarks and then at 10 o'clock u.s leading economic indicators tuesday atlanta fed president rafael bostic and then 245 we have fed vice chair supervision michael barr to speak wednesday we have minutes that's right minutes are coming in for the feds july fomc meeting and then on thursday we're looking at initial jobless claims pmi existing home sales and then friday this one's nice nice little surprise here to see old jerome coming in fed chair jerome going to speak at jackson hole so you know again not a bad not a shabby place to be to speak so i'm sure they have other things on their mind while they're at jackson hole but anyways just know that he'll be on so all these events that i just went over are again economic data you know fed heads are speaking the big thing here to know is that they're just talking heads and it's a catalyst that will potentially move price into our zones that we are going to identify, whether it be in the ES futures, the NASDAQ futures, our favorite names this week, NVIDIA, Tesla, you know, the list goes on and on, and I'll be making more videos for those and giving you those charts. Let's go ahead and move on. The next thing that we're going to be looking at is earning whispers. All right, so let's take a look there. We're gonna bring this over. I think you'll be able to read it a little bit better. There we go. Looks just like this. And we're gonna scroll down here. And this is what we're looking at so far going into this week. So PANW um, after close tomorrow, that should be interesting. That may be something I trade into earnings by using debit spreads. One of my favorite strategies going into uh, earnings, okay? Next thing that we want to be looking at, check this out. We got Lowe's. We have Toll Brothers. I'm interested there. All of these names that I'm highlighting are potential names that I will trade into earnings, just so you know. All right, we'll keep moving down here. Workhorse, probably not on my list, but you know, there's a name or a blast from the past that doesn't do a whole lot anymore. And as I move on into Wednesday, we have Target, we have Snow, we have Zoom, Macy's. I love, like, you know, it feels like we just did this. I'm a huge fan of TJ Maxx, right? I'm a huge fan of any kind of retail stores, especially as we get into school. Right. We're uh, heading, you know, parents are taking their kids to school. I'm still taking my kids right to get clothes for school. I just dropped off my my youngest to uh, Tallahassee this weekend, Florida State University, uh, where I'm a little bit of an emotional dad today. I just literally got back about an hour ago and I'm sitting in here with you guys. I still took her out shopping. I mean, that's what dads do. Right. We take care of our kids. Um, but anyways, my wife is a great bargain shopper. And some of these names I just think do really, really well during these times where inflation is really high. Looking on down here, we're going to move into Thursday. We have Baidu. And then one of our favorites, Kava. This was one of our top picks here in 2024. It's doing really, really well. Um, you know, far as financials go, you're just going to have to wait until they report on Thursday afternoon. But I am a huge fan of this uh this chain right here and i do believe that they're they are going places we do have a chart for them as well and a projection for 2024 so if you need that just let me know here in the room on thursday as well we have workday then we have bill.com into it ross another favorite of ashley's that's my wife and then moving on down you can see we have some bj's there advanced auto parts uh, Red Robin, you know, if the kind of floats your boat. But other than that, those are kind of like the names that I'm looking at. And it's pretty busy. Oh, here's a blast from the past. Anybody still have a Peloton? I'm looking at mine right now. It's got a little bit of dust on it. I still enjoy riding it, but man, what a sad story, right? Let's go ahead and move on. Next thing we're going to be looking at um, is we are going to get into right here. 
I'm going to move on down. We're going to now look at the SPY and the QQQ using quarterly time frames. Okay, quarterly time frames. This is really important because the quarterly time frame is where it's at, right? That's where it is at. I want this as the bigger picture. This is what's really been helping us get on the right side of the trade. Every candle on this chart represents a quarter. All right, everybody, a quarter. And something really significant happened this past week. And that is support. The bullish channel worked very well. And this is the same support level I've been giving you for uh, months now. It came back into here. We were looking for a bounce. We indeed got a huge bounce. 543.8 is the over under for this candle. All right. So this is now a continuation candle. Last week, it was an inside candle. What do I mean by inside? It means that the price of this candle was in the body of this last quarter candle. Well, we broke out of that. Now we're above it. And that level that you need to understand is 543.80. As long as we are above that level, it is a continuation candle. And I'm looking for the market to continue to whoop and go to the upside, whoop those bears to a pulp, right? But seriously, I like pullbacks too, so don't get it twisted, all right? But I'm just saying, as long as we stay above that level, that is our over-under for this, uh, this week going into this week and for the rest of the quarter. Let's just say we don't drop under 543.80. Then in your head, you should be thinking continuation. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll notice I have these Fibonacci extensions, and we have hit uh, two of the targets. Our next targets to the upside uh, would be 568, 581, 595, and 614. It is an inside candle, or it was an inside candle. Targets are 568 and 581, like I just said. If for some reason we drop below that 543.80, then we're back to inside, and I would, accept, I would expect sideways to down, okay? That's SPY. Now let's get into the Qs. Now, the difference here is the Q is still an inside, and this is exactly what an inside looks like. As far as this week, let's go ahead and read those notes. Price stayed above the 442, and we got the bounce that we talked about last week, and a big bounce at that. But unlike the SPY, the Qs are still in an inside candle until price breaks above for us to get that continuation candle. Let this number serve as the over-under going forward. It is. What is it? That's right. It is four. Seven nine. That is your number going into the QQQ for this week. So please remember that number. If you have any questions, let me know. But basically, it's the top of this body. All right. If we break above it, boom, continuation. We stay below it, sideways to down. And when I say down, please understand. I just mean like you know pullbacks to smaller time frames into demand zones. There's some big names out there still reporting, like Nvidia, and there are some big things still going on like FOMC meetings and Jerome speaking this Friday. All right. Next thing that I want to be looking at um, is going to be the dollar, the DXY. All right. So the DXY, I want to go to a weekly. I don't want to stay on a quarterly. All right. And on this weekly time frame, well, this is all we need to know. Market goes up as long as the dollar rejects the bearish channel. This is exactly what I said last week. Well, guess what? We rejected the bearish channel. That was your bearish channel. We went into detail on our broad market analysis last week, and we continue to move down. Notice that we are in a demand zone. And because of that, there's some slight caution here because we stalled on a higher low. If for some reason this week price starts to go above this level in here, then I would be concerned. But it does look like at this moment, especially if we take out this low, that we're headed into the higher demand zone down here at 101 and some change. All right. So again, indeed, the dollar did reject and the market went up. Some caution because or if price goes back above the lower zone. Resistance is 103.08 bullish in the market below 102 and you can see right here we're at 102.4 so just a little bit of caution below 102 i'm feeling bullish in the market if we bounce up here caution we want it to stay okay below this green level here which is around 103.65 okay that is your dollar now let's get into the tnx 10 year we'll take a look at that 
All right, so what happened here? Well, we got the pullback like we wanted, exactly what we wanted. Boom, right into the inside and up formation. Uh, we got a bounce out of that inside and up like we talked about. And you can see here, we have another inside candle. Now, as far as this goes, we got the pullback into the inside and up, but I'm really not concerned unless price bids above 4.35. Where is that? Right there. So we need to get above that zone in order for me to really be worried about what's going on in the market. Yes, uh, the TNX or the 10-year treasury could move up towards this way, but I expect it to reject right around here. So let's just say that the market dips a little bit. Uh, you'll get a lot of fear mongering going on, people freaking out just like they did last time. And then all of a sudden the market bounces again. I believe the market would bounce once the, the TNX comes up here and hits this zone. Just like I believe if the dollar, okay, were to bounce and everyone starts freaking out, I would expect uh, that fear to really top out around uh, this cloud up here and those levels I gave you, okay? All right, let's talk about the SKU. Uh, the SKU closed at 142 this week. If you don't know anything about the SKU, please just Google it. Uh, SKU, this, these are your hedge funds. And basically this is like they're concerned or they're not concerned. Protect off or you know risk on or risk off type of situations. Um, we've had this box on here for over a year. It's working very, very well. Um, I'm gonna leave it really easy for you. You're buying calls five to 10 days out when we get into this level around 133. You just buy them, you hold them, and it's worked for over a year, okay? using this graph right here. And then when prices come up to this extreme level, that's a trendy edge, by the way, you guys know what that is. Um, we look for prices to reject there. When it gets up there, that's when we really start to bring those stops up on your longs, whether it be equity, swing trades, you take in some profits, you basically trim some, keep some, and then we kind of play that rotation back. If the market pulls back, then we start adding into our long-term calls again, or long-term equity as we have all of that, okay? Let's go ahead and move on. Fear and greed index um, this week was uh, coming in at 35. Now it was at the extreme fear last week um, and you can see you know, the market kind of backed off of that. They're feeling a little bit better, but they're still fearful. And that kind of surprises me and I'll show you here. I'm, I'm actually surprised that the market's not neutral to greed already. Um, but, and I say that because you know, obviously um, this is where we're moving up to. And this is your futures. My favorite part of this quick broad market analysis, this is really where I gauge the entire market off uh, off of this. I, I want to be able to explain this to you just for about two minutes. So please, um, if this is your first time listening, please give me a like. Also share with your friends and family as I've been doing this broad market analysis for a very long time. These pieces of the puzzle really help me to be able to gauge and coach our members um, in the right direction. And I feel like we do an exceptional job of that every every week. Um, this supply and demand and using Fibonacci's is just overall just excellent. I love it. So when I look at the ES and the NASDAQ, I'm able to gauge what the market's going to do. So let's just say that I'm bullish in the market. Well, this chart's going to tell me if I remain bullish. If this chart is bearish, then it lets me know to step out of the way and wait for my favorite things to come deeper into a demand zone before I get long. So this is a very important part of this. Let's go ahead and continue. So According to Trendy Fibonacci, this is what I call the imposter level. Well, we closed just around that imposter level uh, on Friday. Now, the imposter, the reason why I call it the imposter is usually it will get a hard rejection to the downside and get very close back to the 618. In this case, that would be around you know 5,500 to 5,490. Now, timing is the variable. The next thing here is the 618 or the golden Fibonacci. This downtrend, which we anchored our coefficients off of, basically we have broken that trend. We are back into an uptrend. And this is where I'm saying, I'm actually kind of surprised that we're not back to at least neutral to greed on this chart. But again, people sounds like they're fearful um, and they don't trust it, right? So they don't trust it. They're getting puts. They're still buying puts on the move up. Now, I do have some really awesome probabilities that we talk about when price is able to hold and maintain the 618, we are then looking for the move into the 88.7%. If you wanna learn about that, come on in and hang out with us. You guys know, if you're members, what I'm looking for to the upside. Now, because I am neutral here, I did take a position in the SPX. One, well, actually we took three on Friday. 
One of them I closed for 366%. The second one was to buy puts to protect right here just in case we gap down tonight. And then for Friday, I bought calls to hit this level up here. So really, this is a neutral strategy for me. Um, I do kind of, now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of wish I would have bought Friday's put side on debits instead of just a straight up put because we had that little bit of a run there towards the end of the day but we'll see how we open up okay overall i'm neutral right here on the weekly standpoint to bullish what i mean by that we're above the cloud we're above the 618 things look really good and i do believe we move here as long as price can hold above that cloud roughly again that's 5490 by around 5470 that is the weekly chart. Now let's move into our next chart, which is the daily. This is where you're going to go ahead and pause this screen. You're gonna put these levels down. This is my resistance for this week. We do trade off of these, but we use smaller time frames. Um, this is where I'd be looking at getting long if we were to get the pullback, and this is where I'd be getting long as well. And that is 54.96 and 53.99. There's a certain approach that I like to do here. Basically, bracket orders. We like to scale in. And just because we get to resistance doesn't mean that I'm looking for a short. And just because we get to the short doesn't mean that I'm looking for a short. There's particulars that I'm looking for on a smaller time frame. You guys guessed it. It's our indicator. It's called the trendy turn signal. And I typically will use anywhere from a three to a five minute chart to give me that signal to go short. Okay. All right, the next thing that we're going to do here is move into the four hour. So let's go there. All right, so here's the four hour. One thing that I wanna talk about, let's do a before and after. If you didn't realize, if we go back two weeks, this is why we were bullish. I told you last week that I believe and with conviction that we were headed here. The one thing that I did say though was, hey, timing is the variable, all right? Timing is the variable. Now I was, kind of surprised that we made it here uh, by Friday, but you know, my portfolio was very happy we did. So in that case, if we continue up here, again, remember, I believe that we're headed up here towards 5690, timing is the variable. As long as the weekly cloud can hold, as long as the daily cloud can hold. And in this case, if you don't really like those because they give you too much risk, here's the four hour cloud. As long as price can stay above that, which is 5555, five, 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 as long as we can stay above that, look for price to continue to basically chew away the supply zone here. And then you will continue to see a move like this and then a pullback into here and then potentially right up here into Friday. Okay, again, ultimate target 5695. If for some reason I'm wrong and we dig a little bit deeper, this is where I'm looking to go long. This is confluent with the levels I was giving you a little bit earlier as well. Let's now look at the NASDAQ futures. All right, so let's get into the NASDAQ. Again, we'll go over to the weekly. This one's a little bit different as we anchored our Fibonacci with these coefficients. You can see that. And unlike the ES futures, NASDAQ basically stalled right over the 618. So this trend is now broken and we have now created that uptrend. Now, far as going into this week, all I'm really concerned about as long as the 50 holds in this cloud. So just basically you could take two lines and say, okay, as long as 19,300 holds by 19,170, I'm staying bullish on my weekly chart. If we could break above the 618, again, overall, I'm looking for the 88.7, which puts me at 20,581. If for some reason we hit both of those levels this week, which would really be a big, big week, um, I would be very cautious. Okay, and that's just me going into this week. Next thing is the daily. Here we go. Here's our levels. Just go ahead and do a screenshot of this. My trigger longs 19,415, 18,971, and my resistance, far as uh, you know, this week goes 19,713, and then short trigger up here towards 19,938. If you have any questions, just let me know. We'll go ahead and move on now to the four hour. Notice here, same thing. You can see how well this worked. This is where we went long. This is where we protect ourselves. So we had a great week. Um, and now, you know, price could drop here, but just like everything else, as long as we're staying above the weekly cloud, above the daily cloud, and above the four hour, things look great. And we're looking for a move up into that level I gave you on the higher time frame. Now, 
again, if for some reason we pull back, I would only be looking for about a 50% retrace or so. Now we do have structure in here and I'll give you that green zone tonight so you guys know where we wanna get long. But just know that we are opening, whether we gap up or not, we would have to gap out of this red zone in order for me to feel a little bit better. But if we were to gap up just a little bit, say you gap up like 100 points, you're still in uh, the supply zone and I would expect it to pull back a little bit and give us an opportunity tomorrow morning, okay? So that's what I got. Uh, the next thing that I wanna look at is the VIX. The VIX is telling me just from a technical standpoint and you know, I'm sure everybody else out there can see this as well, but I do wanna go over it. We hit a supply zone, the VIX came back. It basically you know, broke to the downside like it should. Um, and here we are back to a level. Now I'm cautious between 1392 and 1158. This tells me that the market could still probably gap up a little bit, um, give us maybe a little bit of false hope, maybe into uh, Tuesday, uh, pull back a little bit or, or Monday. It doesn't matter to me, price is king. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that. I'm not in here to try to predict. Um, I am looking for supply and demand. I do have high conviction rate on my zones. But as uh, far as like what happens when we open up, I'm just going to watch price and we'll have those levels first thing in the morning. My overall sentiment is just a little bit of caution today. When we talked about the dollar and we talked about the TNX, there were signs there that say like, hey, the market could pull back for a day or two. And if it does that, we'll be looking for our zones. You guys know that every single morning we wake up here and look at the ES and the NASDAQ futures. We give you an amazing blueprint where we can get long and go short. And those things work really, really well. Matter of fact, if we go back to last week um, and, and take a look at what happened, you're gonna notice like here's some of our blueprints. Okay, you're gonna notice this worked really, really well on the ES futures and the NASDAQ futures. Um, and this, this, this chart right here, I was able to take 366% from SPX just using this ES blueprint. And I mean, we nailed it. It was awesome. And the day before that, we took credit. And then the day before that, we did really well in a butterfly. I mean, we absolutely were killing it. And I really, really love and, and really appreciate not only your support, but some of the comments that came in on Friday about the SBX. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Like it makes me feel that much more you know, better, but also just even more confident. And I love that. And there's nothing I would much rather always just be here in this moment with you guys. I can't wait to teach you. I'm super passionate about it. And uh, yeah, tomorrow morning just can't come fast enough. So thank you again. Don't forget to give this a like. We'll see you again tomorrow morning.